All right. Yes, or all last week we talked about area of two-dimensional figures. What I mean by two-dimensional figures is we're talking about flat shapes, okay? A square, a rectangle, a triangle. Those are all two-dimensional shapes. We are moving into three-dimensional shapes today. That's when we start talking about volume and surface area, okay? So today we're going to work with volume of a rectangular prism. And the vocabulary start up here. All right, they are talking about volume. What is the definition of volume? It's literally on the next page. If you look, even highlight it for you. Kylie. The amount of space inside of a three-dimensional The amount of space inside a 3D figure. or object. Okay, so that's what we're talking about when we refer to volume. Now, when would you want to find volume? When would you use volume? Cole? But when would we use volume to, so if it's talking about the amount of space inside of an object, what are we talking about when you're, when we want to find or when we use volume? So if we're talking about the inside of something, like a shape, not the area, that's what we're talking about. I mean, volume is the amount of space inside a shape. When do you, why would you use volume, Camden? Uh, yes, I want to use a different word though. You're close, super close. Simon, not the space. How about something? How much something can hold? Like my glass, guys. Volume refers to even liquids. How much actually can fit inside of this bottle? That's volume. It's finding how much something can hold. So to find. How much something can hold? So that's what volume means. We're filling stuff up. Stuff like a box. Back there, those boxes by the wall. Okay, the volume is talking about how many books or whatever you can fit inside the box. The volume of the box is what how much stuff can go into it. So an example could be a fish aquarium. Like how much space is inside of an aquarium? So how much space inside a fish aquarium? And what I mean by that is when you're filling up a fish aquarium, you're filling it up with water. You're trying the volume of that fish tank refers to how much water can be held in there. Okay, so that's what volume is talking about when you're filling stuff up. So a non-example would be finding the area. So the let's I don't want to put this. How much space covers? The fish tank not inside but covers the outside so a non-example would be talking about the outside of the fish tank not the inside Uh, probably for a little bit longer. All right, that'll work. Bye.
All right, so now down in the real world length, okay, they give us a fish tank down here. Okay, the dimensions of an aquarium are shown. So number one, what is the area of the base of the aquarium? So now remember, the base of the aquarium is the bottom. So what would be the area? Oh, six, because remember, area of a rectangle is base times height. So you do three times two, which is six feet squared. So the area of the base is that rectangle. It's the whole bottom. Now, what is the height of the actual fish tank, the aquarium? Stevie? Two feet. The height is two. Okay, and then down here, they said just fill in the blanks. What was the length of the tank? The length? Three. What's the width? Two. two. What's the height? Two. two. So three times two times two equals 12 feet cubed, which we'll get into that shortly. So once you have all that, go ahead and go on to the next page. All right. So we're going to talk about volume of rectangular prism here in a minute, but I want to talk about 3D figures. So a three-dimensional figure has length, width, and height. Okay, height is thrown in there too. A prism is a three-dimensional figure with two parallel bases, like a box back there. So a box has a top and a bottom. And then it has a one side, the left side and the right side, and then you have the front and the back. Those are parallel. They go face each other, or they're right on top of each other like that. Okay, that's what they mean by a prism. So a rectangular prism is where all the bases are the same size rectangles. So that's why they call it a rectangular prism. Same shape, same size. Like this one. We have a rectangular top, rectangle bottom, and then the sides are rectangles. All right, that's what it means to be a prism. Now volume is talking, like I said, we've said before, it's the space that takes up inside the three-dimensional figure. That's why they call it cubic units. So area was squared, and we put a two. Now we're doing a three, cubic. So it'd be inches cubed with a three. Every time we talk about volume, it will always be that. All right? So to find the volume of a rectangular prism, it's literally volume equals length, times width, times height. That's it. It's multiplying the three measurements that you have. That's all you have to do for this. So if you want, go ahead and grab a calculator real quick. So example number one is find the volume of the rectangular prism here. So once again, it's volume equals length times width times height. So looking at this, what's our length? 12. So length is usually going to be in the front. The width is what? 10. And then your height is talking about how tall it is. So it is 6. So all you're doing is 12 times 10 times 6. And that is the volume. That's it. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't overthink it. It's literally just multiplying three things together. David, what do you get? 720 centimeters cubed, since we're talking about volume. 720. That's it. All right, let's go over to page 743. We're going to do a couple over there. All right, so number one, I'm going to change real quick. I don't want to do that fraction yet. What in the world is going on? So I'm going to make this 4... 0.6. Doesn't change anything. All right, so once again, volume equals length times width times height. What would be the length here? Cole? Um, 4.6. Oh. Remember, the length is usually the one in front. It's talking about how long something is. So let's talk about 10. Okay, now the width would be 4.6, and our height is 3. So you're just doing 10 times 4.6 times 3. Raise your hand once you get it. So that should be your volume. 
once you multiply those all out, that's why you have a calculator. Peyton, what'd you get? 138 meters cubed. So it's just length times width times height. That's it. All right, number two. We're going to leave this mixed number in here. So volume equals length times width times height. So look at this. What is the length, Peyton? Five. What's the width, Cole? Uh, well, no, ten. Ten. And then your height is that 12 and 3 eighths. Now, when they give you a mixed number like this, the best way to do or ch to change it to is turn it into an improper fraction. So, does anybody remember how to change numbers, mixed numbers, into an improper fraction? Simon. So, what he's saying is, you take the whole number twelve, multiply it by eight, and then add three. Because you always do the whole number times the denominator, and then you add the numerator. And we get what? So that'd be 99, and then you keep the denominator, 99 over 8. Now, these other two are whole numbers. If we want to turn them into a fraction, what do they go over? One. Just 1. So the good thing with multiplying fractions, you don't have to change anything. You just multiply the numerators together. So go ahead and do 5 times 10 times 99. Jennifer, what'd you get? 495, 400, 9, 4,950 yards. Nope. Nope. That's not the, we're not done yet. Okay. I just wanted you to multiply. Okay. So we got 4,950, right? Yeah. Okay. Now do 1 times 1 times 8. <laughs> Guys, you shouldn't need a calculator for that. 8. All right. So now remember. Fractions always mean what operation? Division. So just divide 4,950 by 8. And that will be your volume. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it's the same as oh, hold on now. So 4,950 divided by 8. So you get 618.75. 75, right? So whenever you see a mixed number like that, just change it into an improper fraction. Then you just multiply. So I want you guys to go back and do A and B right there in the middle of page 470 or 741. So just A and B, you're finding the volume of those two rectangular prisms. All right, here we go. So letter A, okay, we have this. This is actually a cube. So volume equals length times width times height. What's our length? Five. Five. What's our width? Five. Five. What's our height? Five. Five. So you're just multiplying those out, and you get what, Cole? Five. Nope. Not five times three. It's five times five times five. Marley? 125 inches cubed. And now, number, letter B. Okay, so we're doing the same formula. What's our length? 10. What's our width? 4. And our height is 6. So we multiply these out. We get what, Jennifer? Cubed. So 240 feet cubed. All right? Any questions on finding the volume? So once again, it's just multiplying it out, guys. So length times width times height. All right, now the next part of this, you're doing the same thing, but this time it's just a real world example. So in this case, they want you to find the volume of the cereal box. So you're still doing the same formula. Volume equals length times width times height. So in this case, what's the length? Eight. Okay, what's the width? Dalton? Three and a fourth. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. 
to an improper fraction. So we do three times four. So 13 is our numerator. We keep the denominator. Okay, now this one is our height, so 12 and a half. So we're gonna change this to be an improper fraction as well. So 12 times two plus one, 25 over two. What do all whole numbers go over in a fraction? One. Okay, so now we just have three fractions multiplied out. So do eight times 13 times 25. Multiply the numerators together. Marley? 2,600. Now we're gonna multiply the denominators together. One times four times two. Back, eight. Okay, so this means to divide, so we're gonna do 2,600 divided by eight, and that will be your volume. Wait for everybody. Stevie, what'd you get? 325 inches cubed. So it doesn't change anything. You're still just multiplying it out even with a real world example. So this is just a cereal box. All right, back page 743 again. We're gonna do number four together about this official, fishing tackle box. So the tackle box is 13 inches long six inches wide and two and a half inches high. What is the volume of the tackle box? Well, we use the same formula. What they say our length was? 13. Okay, what's our width? Six and our height? Two and a half. So we're gonna go ahead and change that. So let's make it an improper fraction. So two times two. Plus one. Five. So we get five over two. What do we do with the whole numbers? Fraction over what? One. one. So do 13 times six times five. Dalton? 390. And then one times one times two. Two. So do 390 divided by two, and that will be your volume. Wait for everybody. Cole? 195. 195 inches cubed. That's it, okay? Any questions on that? All right, just because it's a real world object doesn't change anything. So go ahead and go back, and I want you guys to find the volume of the container okay they give you all the measurements so just fill in your formula and solve it out letter c so it says find the volume of a container that measures four inches long five inches high and eight and a half inches wide so we just replace this in our volume or our formula so the length was what Four. With? Five. Oh. A one, eight, one and a half. Eight and a half. So we need to change this to be an improper fraction. So that would be what as an improper fraction? 17 over two. 17 over two. Okay, and then our height? Five. Five. So we gotta change those to be fractions. Now, all you're doing is four times 17 times five. 340, and then one times two times one, two. two. Let me rewrite this. Run out of room. So then you do 340 divided by two, and we get 170 inches cubed. That's it. Okay. So it's just multiplication. That's all we have to do. Now, on the last thing here, what they're gonna have you do, so like on trapezoids, okay, they gave us a separate, she didn't put you back there, just lay down. Okay, once again, with trapezoids, we had a totally different formula to find the height. 
Now, all you have to do is work backwards like solving an equation like we've done in the past. So what they're going to do, they're going to give you a prism. Okay, they give us the length, gave us the width, but they didn't give us the height, but they gave us the volume. So our formula is length times width times height. Well, that V stands for volume. So you replace that with the volume they give you, 84. Okay, our length was 6. Our width was 4. We don't know the height. So we're trying to solve for the height now. So to do that, we got to first multiply these two. What's 6 times 4? So we get 24H. So the goal is to solve for H. How do we get H by itself? Riley? You're going to divide that 24 away, just like we did when we solved equations. So what is 84 divided by 24? Simon? Three and a half. So your height is three and a half meters. Not cubed because you, well, there you gave us the volume. We we're finding the height. So you're just finding a missing dimension. So you just work backwards. So let's do another one of these on the next page. We're going to do number five here. So it says find the length of a rectangular prism that has a volume of 2,830.5, the width of 18 and a half, and the height of 9 meters. So in our formula, okay, we just replace what they gave us. 2,830.5 equals, do we know our length? No, that's what we're trying to find. Do we know our width? What is it? 18 and a half. And what is the height? Nine. Okay, so first off, we got to get combine these two. So go ahead and multiply 18 and a half times nine. Peyton, what'd you get? So you get 166 and a half. Okay, so how do we get the L by itself? What do we have to do now? How do we solve for the length? What do we have to do? Zach? Divide. That's multiplication. So we're going to divide this. By on each side. So you're going to do 2,830.5 divided by 166.5. And that will give you your length. So 2,830.5 divided by 166.5. And what do we get? Oh, uh, 17. 17 meters. So your length is 17 meters. So in this case, you are working backwards. Okay, it's like solving an equation. No, nope, because we didn't find the volume. We're finding the height or the length. So it's just a measurement. The only time you put cubed is when you're finding the entire volume. All right, your homework for the rest of the day is on IXL, FF18. So you're finding the volume. They're also going to have you find missing dimensions as well. So you got the rest of the time to work on this. This will be due on Sunday. Uh, Ms. Kale, they wanted you down in Mrs. Eubanks' room. So you got the plenty of time. Go ahead and get to work. You should be able to finish this. Follow the formula.
Cam, we get logged on and start working, dude.